Hey everybody, welcome back to Gothic's Rest. What is Gothic's up guys? Rest. Welcome back to Gothic's Rest. What is Rest. up guys? Welcome back to the podcast. You've never you've uh, never had the the Hey Guys intro. That was, that was very that was very <laughs> YouTuber of you. So that's why I hit that's why I hit you with the What is up guys? Oh, a bird nest has spawned. The, yo, so. let's go. Anyways, this is uh episode number 12. Um we're in a mood apparently today. <laughs> uh, Bird, what have you been up to? What, what's going on? I have not been playing this game. Uh, this is the first. Okay, that's. I was about to say the first time I've logged in like this week, but that's not true. I logged in occasionally to do a farm run. Um, but uh, this week has been the week of Zelda for me. I've been playing Zelda. Mm, um, how's that? It's pretty fun. Um, I bought it on release uh, with the intentions of playing it. But I was very addicted to RuneScape at the time, so I just, I just didn't. Um, but uh, I'm on like a demonics task, a black demons task. I was gonna do demonics. Um, I didn't really feel like doing that, um, and I needed to train woodcutting. I didn't feel like doing that. I did some winter tods because I needed to get the 95 fire making, and then I didn't feel like doing that anymore. And I was just like, man, fuck this game. <laughs> I'm I'm done with this for a little bit. I need to take a break. Oh no, is he burnt? Um probably not. Um cuz now I'm training okay. wood cutting again. Um because uh, a certain new update that we're going to talk about came out. Mm -hmm. Um but for now I'm just I I needed I needed a, to do something else otherwise I probably would burn out. So I was just like, you know what? I'm playing Zelda. So now I'm playing Zelda. Nice. It's a good game. Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom? Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. I played Breath. I played a shit ton of Breath of the Wild. I think I have like 500 hours in that game. Um, So I was very excited. Well, actually, surprisingly, I wasn't very excited for Tears of the Kingdom. I forgot that it was going to release until one of my friends texted <laughs> me like the week before. They were like, hey, are you going to pre-order? Or did you pre-order the Tears of the Kingdom? And I was like, nope. Um, but I, I mean, still, why... Why would you pre-order nowadays? I I, I pre-ordered it um, that day because I've had issues with Nintendo Switch games having a very limited stock in, on physical. Um, oh, okay. You like the physical copies? Yeah, I like it for specifically my Switch. I get physical copies. Um, okay, that's fair. It's, it's the only one that I do it on. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm probably gonna get the game anyways. So I pre-ordered it, and then I went. I'm glad I did because. Um, they uh, they didn't have any uh, copies for non pre-orders, so I'm I'm very glad mm. that I did because otherwise I wouldn't yeah. have gotten a copy that day. Um, but oh, I guess we're chopping that one, fuckers. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, just some context by the way. We're we're currently doing forestry. Yeah, we're um, we're attempting to do do a little bit of forestry. We haven't got an event to spawn because this game's cringe, but. Yeah, we just started. We're in Priftinus, which maybe these trees can't spawn the the events, which is now what I'm starting to think. I mean, we'll see. This is one way or another. This is science, so whatever. Um, Can you get the crystal shards from these trees? Yeah, I've gotten two. I haven't gotten any. Sucks. Cringe game. I remember during the um, uh, the Halloween event when you could collect the candies. Oh, see, ro mm -hmm. rising roots. We can get events. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, which one's the there is no green one. Green ones only spawn sometimes. Oh. Uh, but as I was saying, um, the uh, during the Halloween event where you could collect candies by skilling, I remember I, I thought that perhaps um, I, I thought that perhaps the uh, candy mechanic was overriding the crystal mechanic because I just went so fucking long without getting a crystal. Um, but yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. It was very ridiculous. Sometimes the game just doesn't give you crystal shards. Uh, cause RNG, what even is the chance on that? I'm gonna look that up right now. For the crystal shard? Yeah. I think it's like one in a hundred, one in fifty. Uh, let's see. Don't say on the, the wiki for the U trees. I'm looking at the crystal shard. Uh, chopping any tree within Priftinus has a one in eighty chance to receive a crystal shard when receiving a lot. Okay. Interesting. Notably, uh, the town north, Gwyneth, does not count. You cannot get crystal shards while chopping trees up there. I figured, because it's not in Prif. You know, talking about it a little early, I guess. 
Um, but this rising root event, it's neat. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you pay a little bit more attention and you get decent woodcutting XP from it. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Anything else interesting this week for you? Uh, not really. Just been playing Zelda, doing a farm run sometimes. Yeah. Um, I guess I can check my doc that I keep all my things that I want to talk about, but I'm pretty sure there's literally nothing on it. Yeah, there is quite literally nothing. Yeah, mine only has a single item on it, which is going to be me mentioning something for five seconds. You might say grats, and then we move on, so. Awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I could talk more about Zelda, but this is Gothic's Rest. It's not really Zelda podcast, but the game is fun. You can build stuff. Yeah, it looks fun. The build mechanic I I thought was going to be jank and weird. It's actually really fun and pretty intuitive. Um. It's kind of weird at first. You have to kind of get used to it, but um, I, it's there's a mild spoiler, I guess. Eventually, you unlock an ability that you've probably seen online, um, where you can automatically build things that you've built before, and you can like save them. So you can just like really quickly build things that you ha- want to build and have built many times. I. I just build planes. I like flying planes all over the place. Planes are so good that they had to nerf them. I saw like a hover bike design that seemed really bonkers. I've heard that that exists. I haven't watched like any content on the game. I've just been playing it completely blind. Um, And I've seen like Point Crow and um, uh, the other guy. I can't remember his name right now uh, doing it. I think I saw a video on uncle dane's second channel where he talked about that bike and i just That's funny i saw it in the screenshot or in the thumbnail and i was like interesting and then i promptly forgot what it looked like and i've never built it and i don't plan on building it because i like building planes more planes are fun um the small ant that's who i was thinking of planes are if planes weren't nerfed in the way they are they would probably be better than that stupid little bike. Um, but the problem with planes is if you go too far on the little wing object that allows your plane to fly, it eventually just like starts flashing. And then when it flashes really fast, it disappears because they don't want you to mm. just fly to places that you're not supposed to be able to get to, I guess. Um, That's which fair enough a way to handle it, I suppose. Yeah, fair enough, but it kind of sucks. <laughs> I just want to fly my plane. Mm-hmm. They could have just... Uh, honestly, what I would have done, right, is they have... You know, there's multiple layers to the world map now. There's the regular world map that it's the same, air quotes, as it was in Breath of the Wild. There's a lot of differences, but on large, it is the same uh, world map. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's the sky layer, which, you know... Everybody saw it in the trailers. You can there's big sky islands, and my solution for planes, if you didn't want people to get to to other specific sky islands, is I would have made like a altitude cap or something that planes can go to, and they can't like rise above that, and then you have to like do something else to get above that, and then bam, you just cut off planes from being able to get to certain places, because that's also how planes yeah. in real fucking life work, <laughs> so. I haven't played it, so I don't have a ton of like feedback on it. But I I don't really like, mind it that much. I don't. Yeah. It's it kind of sucks when my plane just randomly disappears. But yeah, whatever. It's still fun. And worst case, I just like land on the ground and build a new plane, and just keep going. So it's a fun game. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people have been kind of not happy with it because. At the end of the day, it's just kind of Breath of the Wild, but with new stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It is the most direct sequel that I think Nintendo's ever done in the Zelda series. Uh, the only one I can think of that's anything similar is uh, Ocarina of Time and... What's the other one? Uh, Majora's Mask. Those are built in the same engine, but even still, they're very different games. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, what sets Tears of the Kingdom apart, right, is just, like, the building mechanic. Yeah, the, the building mechanic is the big one. Um, the powers that you have uh, 
aside from the the building part and the all that like in the first game you have the Sheikah slate that has like you know bombs stasis the magnet uh the cryonis tool in this game you have a, a completely different set of tools so that kind of sets it apart as well um mm -hmm. and then also obviously the the sky layer of the map sets it apart and all the changes to the map there's a lot of changes to the map if you don't want to know all of them uh spoiler alert um I, if i don't know if you want me to tell you or you'd rather experience it more blind i don't know what you know about the game i mean i i've watched speedruns of the game oh, okay. so like i i know what's going on mostly do you know about the uh um the cavern layer of the map yeah okay i don't know if they go there in the speedruns i don't know how important it is um uh is, i don't know actually is the final bo the final boss might be in the cavern layer that probably makes sense uh but i don't actually know um, but basically, there's they added a second map, essentially. The, the sky layer is sort of a second map, but it's just like a bunch of floating islands. There's not too much going on up there, because by the mm -hmm. nature of it, you can't have a whole like layer of the map up there. It's just like a selection of islands, so there's not a crazy amount of content up there. But the cavern layer, or the, the depths, I think is what it's called, that's like the juicy new content, because it's basically just a second map that is the same size as the overworld map. It's crazy. Um, and it's very dark down there. You have to like actually use lights. You have to throw these little, some, some method of creating light. And then also there's like permanent lights that you can activate. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and I didn't interact with that until like maybe 40 hours into my playthrough. And I was like, wait, there's a whole nother map to this map. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Like, people don't really discover that until, like, much later into the runs. It it always throws people off because they're like, holy shit, there's a whole nother fucking world out there. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. There's there's a lot of content in that game. It's it's kind of yeah. crazy. Um, There was a lot in Breath of the Wild, but in this game, there is even more. It is bonkers. Yeah, it seems like a, a pretty big update. Yeah. Um I would imagine if you have an update, but big, yeah, big game. It, it's it's a really big update. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, it's it's DLC. Let, let's you know, it's basically just a Breath of the Wild DLC. Well, we had that and it wasn't nearly this big. <laughs> um it's Breath of the Wild uh DLC it's a, it's to a reboot. Electric Boogaloo. Um yeah, there's, there's so much new stuff. Uh, there's a lot, the one mm. thing I've appreciated the most, honestly, is um, they added a lot more enemy types, which was kind of a problem in the first game. There wasn't a ton of enemy types. I still kind of wish there were more, but there's a lot more enemy diversity uh, in the game now. There's a couple of the enemies that I've seen that I still haven't fought. There's like this big three-headed fucking dragon thing that I think is called a Gleok. I probably could fight yeah. one, but they just look terrifying. They're huge. Um, the only thing I've seen is people like one shotting them with a bunch of glitches. So like oh. I have no idea how hard they actually are. <laughs> yeah, I I can easily fight the what used to be like the pinnacle enemy, the Lynels. I can still easily fight those mm -hmm. guys. Uh, I remember I used to fight those all the time in Breath of the Wild. Uh, so fighting them was just kind of a, a matter of getting used to it. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a fun game. I've been having a good time. The thing I loved about Breath of the Wild and the thing I love about this game is that it's so easy to just get sucked in. You just lose yourself. There's so many things to do. You're like, all right, after I do this, I'll go do this. And sometimes you go do that thing you were thinking. Other times you find a new thing, and then you just completely forget everything else you were doing. Mm. You, it's just... The classic side side quest yeah, there's, uh, side track there's you know? so many things to do and because it's an open world game sometimes you'll just see a thing off in the distance and you'll be like i want to go there actually it's it's awesome the the you can go anywhere mechanic of breath of the mm -hmm. wild definitely has always been an aid it's not like some open world games of the past where it's like oh there's a thing and there's just no way of getting there and even if you can get yeah. there it's like pointless the the Koroks in Breath of the Wild and also in Tears of the Kingdom always helped with that because it's like you'd see a cool place and if you go there and there's not a quest there, there's probably at least a Korok there. 
there's always a reason to go somewhere. So, I don't know. Game's fun. Um, but probably shouldn't talk about it forever because that's not really what the podcast is We are a RuneScape about. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but we're also a tangent podcast, so there's yeah. my tangent. Tears of the Kingdom. I play it. It's kind of fun. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. If you, I, haven't, I if have you haven't played Breath of the now, Wild so. um, and you play Tears of the Kingdom, you'll probably never want to play Breath of the Wild. I'll be honest. It, yeah. It's just, it's just a direct upgrade. Yeah. It's, Breath of the Wild's still good, but this is just kind of, you know, it's a refinement of that with even more stuff. So. The only thing I miss is the stasis tool where you could freeze an object and then like give it a bunch of momentum and then yeet yourself on it. That tool is no, great. Kinda sad they didn't I miss keep that one. That. You have a different tool in this game. Um Yeah. Which is also kinda cool. Um again, spoiler alert, you get this was in the first like ten minutes of the game, but probably not ten minutes, but the, it's the the, hand the reversal thing. tool. You can Oh that one time yeah, yeah. on an object is the, the equivalent. Um and there's other ways to eat yourself. There's a, yeah, a there's new bug called Oingo Boingo. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's like two NPCs you can talk to, and they play like a cutscene. Um, and if you place a glider, or I think any object works, but glider works the best, and you stand on it, and then you trigger the dialogue, they'll play the cutscene, and your glider will just be in like another location when the cutscene ends um like just right next to you but it'll have weird physics you won't be able to like interact with it normally and it'll like slide around it'll be all slippery um if you attach an object to it and stand on the glider you can like grab the object and just like fly off into space amazing i might have to look this up no idea why it's called oingo boingo but i think it's a jojo reference it's actually called wacko boingo and i have no idea why this reminds me of um, the uh, the pickaxe in Half Life Two, which you know I mean, Boingo Boingo is also a band, but yeah, I don't know. It's a it's an interesting bug. You can only do it once per uh, per world though, or once per save. A oh, wacky. Once you've triggered their dialogue, uh, you can't do it again. And as far as I'm aware, there's no other NPC that like triggers a similar thing. There might so. be. I'd have to look it up. Um, but decent chance I've probably already talks that npc or whatever yeah probably yeah no, that that reminds me that reminds me of the pickaxe from half-life 2 as i was saying you know oh, the pickaxe? yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah can't you like stand on it and like grab the object and you'll go fucking flying so around normally the pickaxe is a completely normal object but if you take it through a level transition up an elevator um it just turns crazy mm. for some reason um, I see. Interesting. If you don't even have to grab it, if you just walk over it, it just yeets you in a random direction. Um, That's very fun. So, I I used to fuck around with that. I never got into Half Life Two speedrunning, um, but I, I messed around with a lot of the glitches and tricks in that game. Uh, shout out to Desync, uh, fucking hilarious channel. Love that guy. Oh yeah, I love Desync. <laughs> the. Uh, be hopping in real life videos an absolute classic mm -hmm. uh but yeah that's that's all i have on that anyways you were gonna say something before i cut you off with pickaxe yeah. you know i said i was probably gonna get 99 uh slayer right after the episode finished last week i didn't i got it like two days ago wow um because i just like have been doing smithing instead and once again this week all i've been doing is uh smithing raids repeat and i did a little bit of slayer to finish off 99 Epic. um yeah i'm currently sitting on a thermi task i know i have the pet um but all i need is jar to green log so i'm just gonna keep doing the boss until i get the jar so that's been my week <laughs> i haven't done much that's in game epic, dude yeah you know, at least I have um, something to talk about. I played Zelda. Jeez. I mean, you know, like, I, I'm i going to swap up my smithing once I finish with the Addy Bars that I have. I'm going to I'm gonna get, like, halfway through 97, and then I'll probably start doing uh, 
rune two H's boosting with the uh the grogs. I ended up buying a bunch of them. So Oh, yeah. I did get like a a split. I got a fang split at a TOA. How that was is, cool. How much is fang right now? Like thirty mil? Thirty mil, so I got fifteen. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that was nice. But yeah, not 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 a ton going on. Uh, we can talk about forestry for a bit, and then go into second segment and talk about other stuff. Yeah, I guess. I got nothing else really going on this week, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, Though to be fair, the game update pretty... hasn't doesn't have a whole lot going on either. So yeah, I mean, yeah. So you literally just started doing the forestry stuff like right now. Yes, I am experiencing it as we speak. So I guess I could kind of go over this and I could be like, oh, that's a thing that can happen. Interesting, because I still haven't read all of this. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, guys, this is pretty awesome. For those of you woodcutting enthusiasts, they have made woodcutting suck less, in my opinion. Um, they have added forestry to the game, um, which it is the first part of two parts of the forestry update. There will theoretically be a second update if all of the content doesn't get voted no. Um, And it will include some other stuff, but I'll get to that later. Uh, The first thing that they did that I think most people are the most excited about are new tree mechanics. Uh, Previously, when you cut trees, every time you cut a log, the tree would have a 1 in 8 chance of getting cut down. That still applies to specifically uh, farmed trees, trees that you plant in a farming patch. Those still function also, that way. Also, yeah. I was going to say the, the Woodcutting Guild, but Woodcutting Guild actually does function yeah. that Woodcutting way now, Woodcutting Guild, too. Woodcutting Guild functions you just can't get with randoms. the timers. You can't get randoms, and you still always get the plus seven as opposed to the theoretical uh, other boosts you can get. Is it seven or six? I don't remember. Uh, plus seven in the guild, yeah. up to a plus ten. Yeah, it's up forestry. to a plus ten with forestry, but you you always get the plus seven uh, in the woodcutting guild. The forestry one doesn't mm-hmm. count in the woodcutting guild. It's just always plus seven. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the new mechanics that we were speaking about is that instead of the you know you chop a tree and every time you get a log one in eight chance of going away, instead trees are now on a timer. So similarly to the upper level of the motherload mine, when someone starts chopping a tree. Uh, a invisible timer starts, dep- and the length of that timer is dependent on the tree type. For oaks, it's 27 seconds. For willows and teaks, it's 30 seconds. For maples, it's a minute. For hollow trees, it's 36 seconds. For mahoganies, it's also a minute. Arctic pines, 1 minute 24 seconds. Yews, 1 minute 54 seconds. Magics, 3 minutes 54 seconds. And redwoods, 4 minutes and 24 seconds. As soon as that timer is up, then the tree g- gets cut down. These timers are not yep. affected by how many people are chopping the tree. As long as one person starts chopping the tree, the timer starts. And as long as people continue to chop the tree, the tree continues going. Um, yeah, and if, if nobody's chopping the tree, the tree, it slowly regenerates. Not at a one-to-one rate. I believe it is It is slower than going down. It goes back up slower than it would go down. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. I, I heard them say that on one of the modcasts, but they might have changed that since. It doesn't seem to specify here, so I'm not 100%. Maybe it says somewhere else in the blog. We'll see. Um, but in addition... Yeah, the blog doesn't have as much information as they've like given about the skill. Cause, like, which I always know... bothers me, man. <laughs> yeah, they, they always I, do this. I don't remember I don't remember where I saw it, but they, they mentioned that like the uh, forestry events, if there's two events that try to spawn within 10 tiles of each other... They, you know, one of them won't spawn. Um, but, like, none of the blogs say that. So, yeah. like, they always... in Petscape, someone was asking, like, oh, can you get, like, multiple events in the same area? And I was like, no, it's, you know, this way. But I, I can't, like, give you the source because I don't remember where I saw it. This this has always or, bothered me about the it. blog posts for, for big, like, mechanics updates like these. I always feel like they they don't cover everything that they have actually covered in the past. The blog posts are always, yeah. like, dumbed down for like the larger community and let's be honest the people that they're dumbing this down for probably aren't even reading this yeah i mean there's people that are already complaining that it's already too complex and it's like this is so simple though what yeah oh no i can't just chop the tree and nothing happens anymore what do you mean i can understand if like 
we were getting like all of the other bullshit too, but we're not. Even if we were getting all the other bullshit, like the chopping the tree part still isn't even that complex. Yeah, exactly. And like, if the events are too complicated for you, you don't even have to do them. Mm-hmm. You can just you can just keep cutting the tree. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know, but um, in addition to those changes, uh, chopping the stream the same tree with other players will give you an invisible plus one bonus for each other person at the tree, or each person at the tree up to a maximum of plus ten. So for ten players, so it counts yourself. I so think. you always get a plus one. I. It doesn't say other player, and it says up to a maximum of plus 10 for 10 players. It doesn't really specify that it doesn't have to be you. So I think if there's 10 players, including you, you get a plus 10. Neat. By that wording. So, interesting. Huh. And then uh, you will not receive this bonus cutting normal trees, so like, you know, regular tree that gives regular logs, because they still just get cut down in one hit because they're trees. Yeah. <laughs> they're just bitch-ass, shitty trees. Uh, and then also, as we said, the Woodcutting Guild does not get this bonus. The timer still applies, but you just get a plus seven across the board forever. Um, and this part of the update is available for free-to-play players. So trees are better now, everywhere, in my opinion. I think that this is better. Some people will probably yep. disagree with me, but I yeah. disagree with them. So there's a big um, there's a big Reddit post right now. By big, I mean it's just you know near the top. Um, there's a highly uploaded Reddit post right now that's like, oh, the uh forestry update makes redwoods less AFK, and they're like, oh yeah, I can easily go twenty minutes without uh the tree cutting, or without the tree uh depleting. Oh no! Like, you have to click on but, the screen every five minutes. It's almost like the yeah. game forcibly logs you out after five minutes normally. And you're just saying well, that because your fucking logout timer has been extended by Runelight. Fuck you, man. The problem the problem is, though, yes, it can go longer. But it also couldn't but on sometimes. on average, it won't. Yeah, that's on the thing, average. It... That's why I hated woodcutting in the past, because it was so inconsistent. Right? Mm. Sometimes I'd be on the same tree for like 16 years. And I'd be like, cool. I just got, like, seven inventories of logs. This is awesome. Other times, I'd chop every tree next to me in one hit. And I'd be like, wow, this is great. I love this skill. Yeah. I like so... consistency in my AFKing activities. That's why I like upper-level mother blowed mine. That's why I like carambons or something. They have a pretty consistent amount of time until I need to look at the screen again. You know, something like cooking or fletching, you know, smithing even. Something that has a consistent amount of time, which woodcutting did not have in the past. Now, mm -hmm. there's a timer. The timer is always the same. It is a consistent amount of time from clicking a thing and interacting with the screen again. And I like that. Yeah, so before you would get an average of four minutes, but like there's wide variance. You could get the 20 minutes or you could get literally one a second. single chop and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. And like people in the comments are just like hardcore. Like, no, this is a bad change. Cause like sometimes I don't get the 20. It's like, yeah, sometimes you don't get the 20 minute AFK anymore. Or I mean, you don't get the 20 AFK, 20 minute AFK anymore that you might, you know, sometimes get. But on average, you're getting more AFK time. Like, I don't... Yeah, I like the consistency, personally. Dumb. I think it's an overall positive change. Yeah, I agree. Um, even if I do Redwoods now, it's like, oh, oh no, I have to click on the screen every four minutes and 24 seconds. That's a long time, man. And you're, it's not like you're having to worry about events there. Events don't spawn in the Woodcutting Guild. Well... They did for a little bit, but they don't anymore, and they're never supposed yeah. to. If you want uh, more people for forestry, uh, my clan is doing use World 514 west of Catherby. Good for them. Fair. I don't really care that much. Um, okay. Like I said, I'm mostly just here because now this is an actual AFK, consistently AFK activity. 
I don't have to randomly decide, oh, my one in eight chance proct, I need to pay attention to the screen again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're not griefed by random other people joining you, you know? I'm actually getting a bonus from it. So, yeah, I like it. Um, I will probably be training woodcutting during pretty much all of the podcast recordings now because I want to get to uh, 90 for um, Redwoods. Because I want to do Shades of Morton, and I want to get the Zealots, and I need Redwood logs for that. So, Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate that I'm already done with 99 woodcutting, because this seems like it would be a cool update to be able to, to do, but there's no collection log. Um, yeah, maybe with the and... next update they'll add collection log stuff. Probably not, but I can kind of understand yeah, why I... they didn't with this one. There really isn't much... In terms of like collection log ability with it, like the forestry crit, the forestry kit you just buy with money. The rest of those things are just consumables that are tradable in the GE. Um, like like I said, there, pretty I mean, much the only the thing. Log pretty much yeah, the, the only things would be the anima infused the log, then log the new brace. Uh, log brace, I guess too, and the new version of the forestry outfit. Yeah, I would have put those on the collection log personally, but they didn't. Uh, but anyways, yeah, speaking of those things, um, the famous pheasant hunting friendly forester is your main man when it comes to forestry. He set up camp in Draenor and Sears Village, where you'll be able to visit him for handy tips, access to the forestry shop, and your free forestry kit. That's wrong. He didn't give me one for free. Uh, I had to pay 120 GP for it. It's fucked up. Maybe Why would they lie about maybe this? if you like are level one woodcutting, he gives you one for free. Maybe I don't, because does it actually say it gives you it for free. Yeah, it says access to the forestry shop and your free forestry kit. It's fucked up, man. Oh yeah. Huh. Um. My my guess is that if you're like a low or one woodcutting, he gives it to you for free. Because when I talked to him, I was like reading the dialogue because I'm weird and I don't just hold space. I actually read dialogue. Um, I didn't read any of the dialogue. And I just bought it. He he said you're he he said something to the effect of uh, it seems you're familiar with uh, like forestry or woodcutting or something. And I was and my character was like, yeah, I I sure do cut trees. So I think because of that, I had to cool. pay him 120 GP. It's like okay, dude, whatever. My bad that I play the game already. Yeah, how dare you? Uh, but it's 120 GP, so like whatever. Um. <laughs> This new wearable island lets you store a variety of new tools and materials, which you can interact with Gilnor's, Gilnor's forest in whole new ways. You can craft additions to your kit using existing materials combined with items from the forestry shop. To buy them, you'll need a new untradeable currency found only in forestry called anima-infused bark. You'll naturally earn this while participating in forestry events. If you have a forestry kit with you, it'll be conveniently stored within the forestry kit. So it has an internal inventory uh, with its own UI, uh, you do not get anima-infused bark just for cutting trees. You specifically get this from interacting with the events. Uh, and you get a pretty fair amount of it from the events, from what I can tell. Um, I think yeah, I've I only think... done like four events, and as of right now, I have 500 anima-infused bark. So Pretty good. Um, I also have yeah. some leaves. Um, I have yew leaves, which Are makes they... sense. Because use I'm cutting for those trees. yet? No, I don't think so. But I imagine they just okay. added them because they will have use, so they'd rather people start being able to collect them. Uh, gotcha. I have 39 yew leaves from chopping yews so far, and 20 magic leaves, which I'm not sure yeah, where I got Yeah, the leaves them. aren't associated with the tree you're actually cutting, by the way. You can just get any leaves. Okay. Which I think is maybe a good thing. Yeah, cause... that's that's fine. Um, I, I'm totally okay with that, uh, because... Especially if the, the tea mechanics make it into the game the way they were proposed. You're going to need all kinds of different leaves to do the things that you want with tea. So, Yeah, well, it'd be fine for mains if, you know, since they could just buy leaves for irons, it'd be really annoying. It's to already to annoying chop, for like, irons trees. because you already have to chop down a bunch of different kinds of trees to be able to buy stuff in the forestry shop. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Does it all? Does it need to have like a million noted logs? Like I don't, it's ridiculous. I don't get we'll, it. we'll get there. Um, yeah. Uh, 
The next line I was about to read, while chopping leaves, you also collect, or while chopping trees, you also collect leaves, which are also stored in your forestry kit. All the stuff, by default, goes immediately into the uh, forestry kit. So, if you are wearing it, or it's just in your inventory, uh, it goes in. Then, uh, it goes into some of the things that you can put into um, the forestry kit, which you have to buy things from the shop to be able to make these. These include the leprechaun charm. These charms attract the attention of friendly leprechauns. When someone in your group successfully chops a tree, having this charm in the forestry kit means there's a chance a leprechaun will appear and offer his services. You can create them with 70 crafting, 70 woodcutting, and 35 farming. And then you'll need to buy a thing from the guy to be able to make it and combine it with an emerald and a ball of wool. And it will make 10 of them. Be on a stick. These buzzy buddies help pollinate plants. While chopping trees, they have a chance to detect strange bushes that are ready to pollinate and will assist in doing so. You can create these with 50 hunter, 35 woodcutting. Uh, you got to buy powdered pollen from the forestry shop and combine it with a ball of wool and some logs while near a beehive, very specific, and create, it'll create 10 of them. Um, nature offerings, they give you a 60 to 80% chance to receive an additional log while, while cutting trees. And you got to like craft it with some herbs and 50 foot 50 farming and 68 wood cutting these i'm i'm not interested in these at all <laughs> um, yeah uh forester's ration um these tasty treats will have a chance a 30 percent chance to restore 20 points of run energy while chopping trees with a one-handed axe i don't know why it specifies one-handed spoiler alert two-handeds were not added to the game yet they yeah, they I weren't know. canceled we'll get to that yeah <laughs> they were supposed to release in this update but they Last minute canceled on us. So um, you can make those with 35 cooking and 35 wood cutting. Combine leaves of any type with a slice of cooked meat. Can't wait to go collect cooked meat at Barbarian Village. Um, Secretaries of Chastrament. Want to rake the leaves? These handy clippers get you more leaves while chopping trees, roughly doubling the amount you receive. Uh, you can make them with 35 smithing, 35 wood cutting, and a secretary's blade combined with an iron bar from the forestry shop. And it'll make Where do 50. you get the secateur's blade? Do you buy that from the shop? That's the shop, yeah. And then combine them with an okay. iron bar. Um, gotcha. And then all these uh, kits and upgrades are tradable and stackable. So for you mains out there, you can just buy these. You don't have to worry about making them. Fuck that shit. Mm. I don't know how expensive they are. They'll probably be expensive for a little while, and then they'll level out, I imagine, at a pretty low price. Um, events. This is the other fun part. Um, Forcey brings Gilnor to life with new and exciting events. And four of them arrive today. There will be more later, but four of them are here right now. These special events can occur when someone is cutting a tree with a forestry kit uh, somewhere on their person. You don't need to be wearing it. It can be in your inventory, though why not just wear it? Um, and there are no... Okay, this is, this is actually specified. There are no other events happening in a 20-tile radius. We estimate that players will 20 see... 20 tiles, okay. We estimate that players will see four to five events per hour when shopping solo, but a group of 10 players should expect to see 7 to 9 events per hour. We've also balanced events across tree tiers. Oak tiers with a shorter timer naturally have a lower chance to spawn events, uh, so to make up for it, they'll get more rolls on the table. Higher end trees, like magic trees, work opposite, so when you cut one down, you have a higher chance of spawning an event because, you know, it takes longer to cut down a magic tree. So, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Uh, let's see. There I am. Uh, okay, so the event's triggered while you're chopping, not when you get a log. That's good. Yeah. So, like, uh, you know, that's why it says uh, the oak trees uh, get more rolls on the table. I think means while you're chopping, you have a more you will more frequently roll on the, the events table, but it has a lower chance. And then magic trees. I, th I think you're guaranteed if I remember right, I guess, I let me keep reading here. Maybe it made a little specify. Okay. Uh, we've balanced them across the board. When a tree is first chopped, the game rolls on the events table. If the event is set to happen during chopping, the event picks a random uh, point during the tree's life cycle to spawn. Otherwise, the event is rolled and executed when the tree falls. Uh, so, when you start chopping, it rolls, I guess. Uh, okay. And then maybe it continues to roll. You need a forestry kit to spawn an event. So you just need to have one, whether it be on your person or on your back or whatever. doesn't matter. Um, although some events have further requirements. Events check every player at the start. 
Events check every player at the tree for the required item, so as long as someone has it, that event will spawn. So for example, the bee event, you have to have bees on a stick. Um, if nobody has any bees on a stick, it won't spawn that because nobody will be able to participate in it. Um, let's see. If you're one of the players with the necessary item, you'll lose it when the event spawns, but you'll gain bonus rewards and XP from the event as compensation. Uh, and then it goes into what events you can take part in. Um, so I guess even without the item, you can participate in the event from that wording. Um, but as long as you, if you had the item, you get bonus shit from doing the event. Um, so yeah, I don't know exactly how the rolling works. When a tree is first chopped, the game rolls on the events table. Uh, and then Yeah, so it sounds like it predetermines it once you start chopping. And then it picks a point in its timer so like you know you click on a tree it says okay i'm gonna roll and then it's like all right at two minutes 40 i'll spawn this and then if it it fails that roll it'll just go at the end yeah and then my guess is it rolls multiple times when you start uh chopping a tree and that's why it says like you know oak trees get more rolls in the table so like they'll roll the table multiple times but just have a low chance each time they roll it um so kind of like a yeah, maybe. a 20 in 128 as opposed to a 3 in 128 cuz it rolled yeah. multiple times something like that i don't know the specifics are dubious but i'm sure the system works let's talk about what events there are rising roots this is one of two events that i've seen so far um basically uh these gnarly roots are trying to protect their woody brethren Cut them down for XP and anime-infused bark, and make to, make sure to keep an eye out for glowing ones. Basically, a bunch of roots spawn around. You can cut them, you get inv- anima-infused bark. Sometimes there will be a green root. Cutting down the green root gives you more XP and more anima-infused bark. You should click on the green one. It's ones. also, like, by far the best event. Yeah, it seems very good. Yeah. It's very simple. You just have to cut the roots. Not much going on. And you get a lot of XP and a lot of bark. Very good event. Um, the next one, flowering tree. Help bees find the right two flowers to pollinate. You'll need a bee on a stick for this event to appear, but you'll be rewarded with XP, animal infused bark, and some seeds or tasty treats. I don't know what, I don't know how this one works. I haven't seen it spawn yet. I don't have bees on a stick. I'm um, working on that. <laughs> yeah, my understanding is that, like, there will be yeah, the, like, it's... purple flower that spawns, and then a bunch of white ones is that spawn. It... I imagine you this, have is... To... this is kind of like the, the mulch one, where you have to, like, find the right combination of things well, to Well, one on. of the flowers will be, like, special, and you'll bring pollen from that flower to the purple one. Interesting. And now it'll move around. Okay. Which one's, like, the one you yeah, need yeah. to do. I think it's, like, indicated by bees or something around it. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I'm sure there's some indication, uh, but I'm going to move on to the struggling sapling because I know how this one works because it's the other event that I've actually seen. Help the poor sapling grow big and strong. Find the Click the right combination of mulch to feed uh, to the baby tree before it withers away. You'll gain some XP and anima infused bark in turn. Basically, a tiny little sapling will spawn instead of a stump when you cut down a tree. And nearby, uh, there will be four different types of fertilizer that spawn. There's like dung, bark leaves and decayed leaves or something like that uh basically you can pick up any combination of three of these so you can pick up three different ones you can pick up three of the same one two of the same and one different one and you can feed them to the tree and when you do so uh when you when you feed the tree it'll say like it's actually we were talking about earlier it's kind of like wordle in in a way it'll be like oh this uh, this thing that you fed it, so let's say you did like mulch, mulch, bark, it'll be like, oh, bark in the third position is correct. And you'll be like, oh, okay, cool. So you need to find the right combination of stuff that does the best, and then as soon as you find the right combination, you can start just always feeding it that, and that'll yeah do it the fastest. And it's better to tell your teammates, like your, your fellow wood choppers, hey, this is the best combo, because... You want it to go faster because you get more XP that way. Yeah, like more XP, more, more rewards the faster you do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, doing it solo by yourself and letting your teammates struggle with, with bad combinations is actually, like, grieving. I'm just, this is probably kind you know, of you're, funny, you're, though. You're, 
Uh, yeah, you're just getting worse <laughs> XP for yourself, though. Um, that, speaking I of like that event. worse XP and griefing, the Leprechaun event. Yeah, what's going on? So, uh, what, is so, this griefing? I don't... Yeah, so how it works is you have to have a Leprechaun charm. And if you do, you'll get a Leprechaun that will appear. And it will be basically a bank deposit box, but only for uh, logs. And the reason this is griefing is because instead of a leprechaun, you could get any other event oh, yeah, that, that gives sense. you XP. Yeah, and you're probably so, just chopping trees next to a bank anyways. Yeah, the, I can't think of a single tree you'd be chopping where you'd want to be, like, you know, summoning a leprechaun. Like, yeah, you, you know, don't have to run to the bank, but the bank's usually no more than, like, 20 tiles away. I mean, yeah, you're probably picking trees spots that are are close to a bank so yeah there's like the u on the north side of um or not you the teaks that are like north of uh north of uh, soul wars or like any teaks really are nowhere near a bank but you're just power dropping those anyways um it's... yeah malachi Malachi's been cutting teaks and running to a bank and depositing them because he's like, "Oh, I want to no. get untrimmed wood, or I want to get untrimmed construction." I'm like, "Dude, trust me, brother. You don't need to be doing this. You can still get untrimmed construction, and you won't need to chop trees like this. I, I promise you." Ah, uh, that is painful. But he, he, he is the way that he is, and he never listens when I tell him shit like that. It's like yeah, I promise so- you, brother. You just train woodcutting normally and he's like well that doesn't yeah. make any sense because if i if i train woodcutting normally i'll get 99 woodcutting before i get 99 construction i'm like no you won't you have to you have to really try to do that mm-hmm. if you're just cutting like if you get to the if you get to perf dennis and you start doing mahoganies and you cut them and then you bank, bank them as planks i promise you you will get 99 construction leaps and bounds before you get 99 woodcutting promise you it's not that hard to get untrimmed construction you just have to actually think about it a little bit why does he want untrimmed construction the same reason i got untrimmed runecrafting he got it as his first one i think okay because i see he just spent RS3. a lot of money in rs3 yeah okay i guess it's like and it's a it, don't get me wrong it's a good cape to have but it's like mm-hmm. you know yeah <laughs> He's, he's taking it way too seriously, you know? And it's like, I, I promise you, you don't need to put in this much effort. You don't need to think about it this hard. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't have to think about uh, it very hard either. Just, you know, don't equip the Leprechaun charm and you're and you're good to go. <laughs> it's a bad item. Yeah, um, that's kind of um, nice that I know that that's bad now. Um, because now yeah. I can just get bees. Is probably the only yep. thing that I will get. Yeah, all the other ones, you know... I'm gonna say I'm gonna be um, selfish. I might I might get some pollen uh, to start with, but I'm mostly gonna save up for the clothes pouch, uh, log basket, and log brace. Basket and the brace. Will I be think first, you're better then... off, honestly, just only having the rising roots and the mulch because I, I know rising roots is like the best one. I definitely want to at least buy bees once just to get it and see if it's any just good. To see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I imagine That's they'll fair. I imagine they'll eventually do balance changes now that people are like, oh, this one's the best, this one's the worst. They'll, they might balance them with the, the second update, and obviously there'll be more events the next update. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, those are, the, those are the only events right now. Um, next update is supposed to have more events. Um, I remember that one of them is a pheasant event. Um, I, I, I don't know when, I don't know what you're going to do in that one, but there will be pheasants spawning around trees, I and think, I love that. <laughs> I think they're not doing that one because no. I think you needed to kill the pheasants or something. Yeah, they're like, fuck oh, those peers. That's... Well, no, because it wasn't peers. It was like, oh, it's like animal abuse, and it's like, what? This is RuneScape. Okay. Yeah, they I got know. bots killing chickens twenty four seven. What do you mean I animal know, abuse? Dumb. I I don't know. We roll a fucking boulder onto a unicorn in this game. And it's graphic. It's pretty. It's pretty based. I mean, yeah, it's it's a fucked up part of the quest, and like, I I kind of love it. Um, but like, y'all better not be crying fucking animal abuse. This is this this is really the state of fucking twenty twenty three. Like, come on, man. 
this game's rated like T for teen essentially. So What is the actual what's the rating board that they use? Peggy 16, that's what it is. Mm. Which is essentially T for teen. You know why yeah. it's Peggy 16? Uh no, I don't. Alcohol. Nice. Oof, it has wait. the it has the drugs label because the Peggy board uh, the Peggy board's pretty pretty high pretty they're pretty antsy strict. about alcohol. Yeah, pretty strict about, yeah. about alcohol use. Um and then also it has the in game purchases tag. So Okay, that makes sense. Because bonds and membership. I believe both of those count as in game purchases on the Peggy board. Interesting. But yeah. Um, um, anyways, forestry. Now we're going to talk about the yeah. forestry shop. Um, there's yes. some stuff in here. The two-handed axes, like I said earlier, not a part of this. Saddening. Uh, but whatever. I, I'm going to tangent about two-handed axes real quick. I was kind of excited mm-hmm. for the two-handed axes because the concept of, you know, gain more XP yeah, but less I, logs. I was like, let's go. AFK. Yeah, even without the... Even without the the rations, like occasionally you just get better AFK. Like, you know, for for a chop, there's a chance you just dunk at the log. Like, thumbs up. Of course, sounds I want good to me. That. Yeah. And also, I get to the the two handed axe models. In my opinion, they look pretty cool. I kind of like them. They I know look some, so sick. I know some yeah. people were not happy about them, but I thought they looked two handed cool. infernal axe. Please give. Yeah, me. I thought they looked pretty sick. I'm curious. I hope it's the case. I hope you can upgrade a two-handed dragon axe into a two-handed infernal or crystal axe. Um, because they said I something hope. about like, oh, you know, once you once you turn it into a, a two-handed axe, you can't change it back. So yeah. I was hoping that I, I imagine it will work this way, but I can I can see a universe where it doesn't. But I'm I'm imagining you can turn a two-handed dragon axe into an infernal or crystal one as well. Uh I don't see a two-handed infernal axe there's a two-handed crystal axe i think they just um, previewed those four specifically it was the the third age the dragon the crystal and the rune one i think right well they're all in the on the wiki right oh are they the, yeah oh is there not an infernal one i don't see one weird champ yeah i don't i don't know that is kind of weird i guess we'll see but yeah, but yeah, the, those are not in the game yet. Um, I will probably not talk about them further. But I was pretty excited for them, so I'm, I'm a little sad that they are not actually in the game. But you know what is in the game? The log basket. Uh, this is in the forester shop. Um, it's a fish or barrel, AFK. but for logs. Thumbs up from me. Love that. Yep. Uh, you can grab it for five thousand anima infused bark, and then here we start getting into the bullshit. You will need 300 willow logs, noted, <laughs> and 300 magic logs, noted. Everything in this shop requires both the anima-infused bark and seemingly completely fucking random types of logs and amounts of logs. Yeah, I don't get why you need this. Like, I get that they like, wanted to the add point? more of a cost to them as opposed to just the anima infused bark cuz i can already tell why they didn't want to make it just the anima infused bark that shit's so easy to get holy fuck um they could just adjust how much anima you get though i mean i guess i don't know but like yeah i, I, I don't know it's weird i, I kind of get it but at the same time it's annoying it's especially annoying for theoretical iron men cuz i think i have a bunch of like random types of logs sitting around let me look at my bank I know I have a shit ton of maple logs because funny uh, kingdom moment. Yeah, I have 31,000 maple logs. But yeah, I only have 218 nice. willow logs. And I need 300 for the log basket. So I'm just going to have to go ahead to drain our village for a little bit and cut down some willows. Like, It's not it's not a, an extreme problem, but it's a mild inconvenience, you know? And like, if, mm-hmm. if any of these ask for oak logs... Bitch, I got 45 oak logs. What the fuck am I doing cutting down oak trees? I guess this yeah. this makes more sense for Iron Men in the future that are creating new accounts, knowing that this content exists. They'll be like, oh, I'll save some of these oak logs when I'm training woodcutting early on. But you don't even train on oaks for very long. like, And you're probably training fire making with those because you're going to Winter Todd because you're an iron and I hate you. Don't do that. Go do something else. 
but it is technically efficient. So fuck you. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's weird. I'm just gonna keep going with these rewards. The log basket is cool. <laughs> Thumbs up. Uh, log brace. You don't want the log basket in your inventory? Well, guess what? You can put it on your forester kit that goes on your backpack. This one costs 3,000 anima infused bark. Good change. Yeah, good change. Uh, 3,000 anima infused bark, 300 maple logs, and 300 yew logs. Noted, of course. You can't hold that many in your inventory. Uh, and in mm. order to make the all-in-one forestry kit, you'll need 75 smithing, 75 wood cutting. That is, some, that is a relatively steep smithing level, all things considered. Um, 45 nails. I hope that's any type of nail. I hope it's not like specifically iron nails or something. Uh, Bronze nails. Yeah. Uh, two ropes <laughs> and three adamant bars. I imagine it's any yeah, type I, of nail. I, I assume because they don't specify it's any nail. For some reason, I was thinking like iron nails were just called nails. Um, but I'm remembering now that they, they all have a material type listed. So, yeah, it's not like, um, there's something where it just says like the base version is just whatever planks planks. Yeah. Regular also planks crossbow. are just planks. Yeah. Crossbow. Anyways, uh, lumberjack outfit. This is useless. Um, unless you're a weird iron, iron man, or I guess even a main account since uh, this isn't tradable. If you're a weird, restricted account, this could theoretically be useful. But you can buy the lumberjack outfit for like a thousand to a thousand five hundred per piece, and random assortments of logs, u logs and magic logs. And the top requires redwood logs. What the fuck? Yeah, just go get ninety wood cutting before you're allowed to have your lumberjack top. What? Yeah, I I don't understand this. Um. It's still like infinitely faster yeah, just, just to go do just it. Just go via... do temple trekking. Yeah, way lower like requirements. Twenty minutes of temple trekking, and it takes like no time at all. This is yeah. so weird. The, I, I was fine with them adding this, like whatever, sure, cool. But these prices are wacky. Like the anima infused bark doesn't matter, but for reference, uh, the lumberjack top sixty u logs, one hundred twenty magic logs, and one hundred and twenty redwood logs. If you're if you're an Iron Man trying to buy this, you need ninety wood cutting before you can have the lumberjack top. Like what? Is there other ways for irons to get redwood logs? I, the I have no only idea. other method is shades, and you need redwood logs to be able to get the redwood logs from shades. I believe. Oh yeah, okay. So cool. Yeah, you're you're totally right. You need the gold chest. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, just, you know, go fuck yourself. Get 90 woodcutting before you can get the outfit that boosts your woodcutting level. Like, what What was the plan with this? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like, I can understand, okay, magic logs. Sure, whatever, fine. Like, you want it to be kind of expensive. I can get that. 75 isn't crazy high. Like, whatever. But redwood logs? Kind of weird. Like, I can understand, like, some of these... But, like, and we shouldn't cater the whole game to Iron Men, but, like, that, it, I don't know, that one just makes make no sense, sense to me. Yeah, it just, and it's yeah. only the top that requires redwood logs. Like, what? It yeah. Just, it just doesn't make any sense. It's very weird. They all require just, like, different amounts, and I don't I don't yeah. understand the rationale behind it. Like, the, the hat requires 200 U, 100 magic. The legs require 160 U, 140 magic. And the boots only require 200 U logs. Like, huh? It just, I don't know. Weird. It's a big thonk. Cool, though, I guess. I wasn't going to buy it anyways, so. Uh, mm-hmm. And then also, um, you can instead get the forestry outfit, which is a cosmetic override for the uh, lumberjack outfit that makes you look like Tingle from The Legend of Zelda. Yep. Each piece costs 1250 anima infused bark, the appropriate lumberjack outfit piece, and 60 of every type of log. Why? <laughs> every single one. Oak, willow, teak, maple, mahogany, arctic pine, yew, magic, and redwood. They should just cost anima. Per infused. piece. I don't... Like, maybe they're trying to make the logs valuable again by, like, making you have to use these, but... <sighs> I don't know. Weird. It doesn't... Very weird. Yeah. The clothes pouch is kind of cool. Yeah, this is actually... I, I like this, and I hope they do this with, like, Graceful or something in the future. That might be a controversial opinion, but I don't care. Um, if you're really attached to your current fasting escape, 
we have the product for you. The clothes pouch will let you gain all the benefits of the Lumberjack outfit while wearing whatever you like. Um, do you note that other set bonuses will override uh, what's in your clothes pouch. So if you're wearing graceful, the uh, it says specifically if you're wearing a graceful top, the benefit from your Lumberjack top will be ignored. Um, so it prevents you from wearing like graceful or anything. Oh, I just stopped chopping mm-hmm. trees. I've been sitting at my bank. There's nobody here anymore. Sad. Um, yeah, so you you can't wear, you know, stuff like that, which I guess makes sense. Fine. Um, but, you know, now you can just wear random bullshit, which is kind of fun. Uh, you can grab this item for 10,000 anima infused bark, 300 willow logs, 300 maple logs, which is like, that's a reasonable price. I, it's a weirdly large amount of those but whatever Uh, and then you'll craft it with 50 crafting and 50 woodcutting using a thread and some leather neat I like that change I kind of hope to see more items like that um, that allow us to wear other stuff I'd love to see one for graceful I was kind of hoping the clothes pouch would just work with all the uh, the outfits but you know yeah, beggars can't nice. be choosers, I guess. But it, it is specifically an attachment to the. Uh... Is it specifically an attachment to the? Yeah, it goes in your uh, your kit. Does it? Okay. You force yeah. your kit. I think. Uh, there isn't a spot for it in it, but I know you you buy it as a blueprint. So I'm not sure if it's like a separate item here. I'm gonna wiki this. Clotha's pouch. The wiki might not be updated yet for it. Let's take a look. The clothes pouch is an item. That's all I need. Yeah, the clothes pouch can be stored in the forestry kit. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. Yeah. The uh, I hope I hope to see more items like that log. in the future. Yeah, funky shaped yeah. log. This is probably the only one that a lot of people care about. <laughs> um, it's the only one I care about. Uh, it, it's a beaver pet transmog. You can you can feed. I don't it. have the beaver yet. You can feed it to the beaver. And then the beaver can then eat another type of log, and it will change colors based on the type of log you feed it. Cool. Yeah, it's like the uh, Guardians of the Rift uh, pet transmog thing, but it permanently unlocks rather than being a thing it's in your so bank forever. It's so dumb. <laughs> I hate that shit. Like, it's the only one. Uh, the, the fucking... Uh, the red acorn you get from Sepulchre, I'm pretty sure is a permanent unlock, if I remember right. The, yeah, the, the heron blue heron is permanent, permanent unlock. Mm-hmm. But the Guardians of the Rift one, no, that one you talk to your, you give it to your guy and he just changes into it and you get to keep it. Because, oh no, what if he changes it, what if you tell him to change into a, a the astral altar one and, and he changes back, then you're gonna, then you wouldn't have the item, just make it so I could use a dialogue option with him. Just, yeah. just make it unlock a dialogue option, and I can just Please. tell him to change into the thing. Why? Yeah, it, Why? It doesn't make any sense. This game is the king of inconsistency. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, it costs 15,000 anima infused bark and 500 of every type of log. Why? I mean, I guess, yeah. I guess for this one, sure, I'll allow it. But weird. It's it's still just weird. And then you may be wondering what happened to two-handed axes. We made the decision to move this reward to the second part of the update so we can correctly address your feedback regarding this hefty new reward. It's almost like they they advertised it as you just get more AFK ability and then like threw on random run energy mechanics to it at the last second. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the, the run energy mechanics and, like, why they wanted to do that, but, I don't know. They... Did they need to? I, I don't understand it. Why couldn't it just work? Well, because it's just more XP per hour for doing nothing. No, you had to buy the upgrade. Okay, I guess. I don't know. It's probably not going to be cheap. But maybe? Maybe? I mean, it's probably just going to be logs and, and anima infused I mean, bark, Yeah, right? but it'll probably be like a million of every type of log. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know. I can't imagine it going for more than like a couple hundred K on the GE yeah, probably, at most. But like, 
I don't know, I don't... As far as I understand, it wouldn't be, like, a significant XP boost. It would just be, like, an XP boost. I, I don't know. Who knows? It, it's... I, I feel like the communication for forestry has been in stark contrast... For, for both forestry and, for to some degree, Desert Treasure 2, has been in stark contrast to the communication we've had for sailing. We hear nothing about these updates until they drop, like, the pull blog on us. Mm-hmm. And then they start talking about their ideas for it. Whereas with sailing, we're constantly I mean, I feel like getting we had, communication. I feel like we had a decent amount of communication for for the other ones. Like, we got, like, blogs before, like, for the betas and stuff. Uh, before the poll blogs. But... I mean, we definitely haven't been getting as much information as we have with sailing, yeah, but I think sailing is kind of special in that regard. I guess, but it's the shit where they just, like, they're changing these mechanics last second. Like, as they dropped yeah. the, as they literally didn't tell us anything about tease about what they actually did, until they just fucking dropped it on us when they were polling them. Suddenly these tertiary effects and the actual effects that they had were just, there they are. We didn't discuss them with you at all, but here, vote. We, I, we discussed most it, other things, it, but just vote on It's a mixed these. thing for me. I want the devs to have more freedom in what they do, right? Because the community isn't always going to vote for what's, like, best for the game. But also, like, when the devs come at us with shit like the tease, then it's like, do I really trust the developers? Specifically the tertiary with... effects. Yeah. Or, um... The tertiary effects were just so wild. Just way out there. Or there's like the the uh, rewards from the uh, Amir's Arena, right? Yeah, just like they, way they came out, out out with all of those stuff, and I'm like, do 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 any players want these rewards? Does anyone want this shit? Clearly, no, because we voted no on it. But you know, like for the most part, I trust the developers, but sometimes they just come out out from left field with these like ideas that like make me think, like, what the fuck were they cooking, dude? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like sometimes they probably just end up in like an echo chamber where all the devs yeah. agree that it's a good idea and they don't have any outside input. And so they're like, oh, the players probably want this. And they, they kind of convince themselves that it's it's a good change and then it gets out there and then they're like, oh, wait. And they, they like hear the reasoning from the players and they're like, oh, yeah, this is stupid. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's not out of ill intent or yeah. even out of a, a misunderstanding of the game. It's just they think they of something that to was, snap them back into reality. They, they think of something that theoretically is like a good, like the, all the bonuses from the tertiary effects are good, right? I would like those buffs, but I don't want them to come from forestry. <laughs> what the heck, man? Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, like if those I, were in the game somehow related to the thing that they actually affect, maybe I'd mm-hmm. be okay with it. But Specifically, yeah, I mean, increased superior chance from forestry just sounded so weird. Like, I'd want to use that all the time. Because mm-hmm. superiors are like, that's a big deal, right? <laughs> like, I'm yeah. trying to get elite diary or elite uh, combat achievements because the superior chance goes up. And that's crazy good. So, I don't know. It's, yeah, and I mean, it's weird. like, you know, Michael had talked to us about, like, oh, you know, skilling should give you things that help with combat. But, you know, I like I said there, I feel like that's not the same. That's, yeah, as... that's overstepping the bounds a little bit, I think. Yeah. Because, like, you get, you know, potions and food and armor, not, like, increased Tertiary chances Tertiary to... effects. Yeah. Um, they, they help you in killing the thing. They don't, like, boost your chance of getting stuff, which is something that like rs3 does a lot and a lot of people don't like those systems where it's like you know you need to do a million things before you're able to do yes, something because you need all the, the air quotes efficiency scape stuff where you have to go around and yeah. find all the fucking infinity stones that help you do the thing you want to do not a huge fan yeah, of that. that yeah it can be annoying but yeah uh that's forestry all that's in the game right now um, and our, our yeah. various tangents. Part two will contain 
leaves and tertiary effects. No, it won't. It's only going to contain tertiary effects because the leaves are already in the game, you fucking idiots. Campfires and bonfires. Do we bonfires. need to talk about the part two stuff? I, I think it's important for the people to know that this is this is what's it's still on the way. I mean, it's what's in store. Yeah, it, it's. I'm just going to read this list, and that's just the end of it, right? It, the tea brewing, the new events. There's going to be a couple more events, probably like four or five more, I'd guess. New rewards, including the two-handed axe. Not just the two-handed axe, noticeably. It says including the two-handed axe. There's going to be other stuff. I guess the other stuff relating to the new events. Maybe some other things. Probably. Um, Yeah, there's more events planned. Yeah, new events is one of the things. Uh, Balancing and feedback changes. So yeah, balancing and feedback. So they'll probably, with the set of new events, they'll probably balance the, the current ones based on player feedback as well. Um, and then they're they're gonna have like some Discord stages. Now that they've realized that the Discord stages for sailing have done very well, they're gonna communicate this update uh, a little bit more. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah. And then the part two poll will go up uh, July twelfth through nineteenth, and then the update will probably come out at the end of July, kind of like this one just came out at the end of June, I would imagine. So. Neat. Yeah. Neat. Uh, anything else for us to talk about in here? Pride event's over. Yeah. You're no longer allowed There's to a be survey. gay. Pride's over. Yep. Yeah. N- no more, no more June pride, is coming boys. to an end. Pack Sorry, end. boys. Pack up the pride. It's all over. Um, there's a survey, so you should go vote in that. A uh, chisel has been added. Still... A chisel spawn has been added to Guardians of the Rift. This is game changing. Let's fucking go. <laughs> That's actually huge. I've forgotten a chisel so many times. And I was always like, man, it feels like there should be a chisel spawn here. Wait, this pisses me off, actually. They can change it to add mm. a chisel spawn, but they can't fucking update the Guardian Eye. Fuck you guys. Yes. <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> You're, you're still thinking about Guardians of the Rift. Don't try and hit me with the, oh, we didn't think about Guardians. No, you just updated it. Update the, the fucking eyeball. Assholes. Um, let's see. They updated the escape crystal as well. Um, there's a new visual and textual indication to, in, to tell players when the crystal is active or deactive. Uh, right-click option now allows player to tel- toggle the auto-teleport on and off. Um, that's it. Yeah, not much. Um... But I think now is a a good time then to go to break. This week's update is brought to you by Breath of the Wild 2. Or as I've heard it called at one time, Breath of the Kingdom. Go buy it if you like Zelda. It's a pretty fun game. Uh, I'm not paid by Nintendo. I just genuinely think the game's pretty good. This week's update is brought to you by this struggling sapling. He's just a sad little guy. He's a little guy. Give him a little little hand. Hey everybody, welcome back from the break. Um, Bird and I thought it might be a little fun if we go through the uh, survey they had and kind of, you know, talk our way through it and you know show us or show you guys what our like thought process is while we kind of fill out one of these surveys because I think these surveys are really important for giving. The, I take them very the old seriously. school team. Yeah, when I actually remember to do them, you know. I want the old school team to have like a you know a good idea of like what I want in the game because I hope that they take the feedback seriously and like use it to you know determine I, the I imagine future they do, development because as I was discussing earlier I don't think a lot of people I don't think a large portion of the player base is actually like going on the uh, the blog every week and reading all the blog posts so I imagine only they're like most enfranchised players are actually taking these surveys. So I'd like to hope that they take the results from them pretty seriously. So uh, th- this one is uh, at the end of the uh, forestry blog. It was also uh, in the is... most recent Gilmore Gazette. This is the same one. I think I've, I think I've mentioned it on the podcast over the course of the last couple episodes, but we've never talked about it in depth because we had other things to talk about. Yeah, and I forgot to do it. So now I'm doing it now. Um, so first thing it does when it, when you open up the poll, this is pretty standard, is it asks for your total level. Um, so I'm in the highest bracket here. 
2000. Wow, what a fucking loser. <laughs> is the is the highest bracket 2000 to 2277 in this one? Cuz I know sometimes yeah, just they 2000 plus. Sometimes they split up the uh 2200 bracket as well. No, just 2000 plus. 2001 plus actually. And I, I personally think it's worth it to split out into the 2200 bracket as well. Cuz 2200 yeah, I think is it, like that's the that's the end 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 game players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, there's quite a bit of grinding you have to do f- to get from twenty two hundred to, or from, to get from two thousand to twenty two hundred. That's probably yeah. like the longest bracket. Ooh, hey, Multivent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just <laughs> not talk for a minute actually while I do yeah, this. Yeah, event. let's 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 do this event here. This is just a part of the recording now. Um. Green leaves is the third ingredient. Is good here. Uh, let's bring it. I always clicked him when I was doing smithing. Okay, so at the end of the first section of the survey, uh, they are asking you to rank uh, one through five from most favorite to least favorite. Uh, different activities so they have quests pvm updates as in bosses and raids skilling updates pvp updates and game modes like leagues and dead man so this is this is pretty easy for me i'm gonna do five for quests or no sorry not five one for quests i love questing uh pvm updates i'm gonna put as two skilling updates three pvp is five uh game modes is four And now we can move on to the next page. Yeah. Those are just the trying to figure out what kind of a player you are questions. Yeah. How do you describe your overall enjoyment of quests in old school RuneScape? I find them extremely enjoyable. Wow. How do you describe your enjoyment of the following elements in existing quests? The stories, the characters, the dialogue, the cl- locations, the combat, the puzzles, the rewards. Um, this is just to kind of figure out why you like to quest. Um, so, you know, I I really like quests for the story. I think the story in RuneScape is really compelling. You know, a- other MMOs have stories, but, like, a lot of the quests are really just kind of filler. Um, so, you know, the stories and the characters are pretty good. The dialogue can range from very enjoyable to pretty bad. Yeah, um, very true. I, I think the dialogue in quests is actually really important. I actually like to read the dialogue because some of them, sometimes it's just banger. Sometimes it's just hilarious mm-hmm. or interesting. Uh, so I think the dialogue is really important. And I think they've done a fairly good job with a lot of the newer quests. Um, yeah. I, it's mostly older quests that have like really bad dialogue. Some of the older quests are really fucking good, though. Like Just absolutely co- absolute comedy gold in some of those fucking quest dialogues. But a lot of them are just mm-hmm. terrible, boring, and lame. I also oh god. Uh, the next question is: if you had to pick one single quest as your favorite, which would you pick? And it gives you literally every single quest. <laughs> uh, I like the locations a lot. You know, going to Prif as a reward is super cool. Like going to the new locations mm-hmm. all the time. Like I'm super excited for Desert Treasure Two, the new places that the bosses will be in i definitely want to see that yeah below ice mountain was cool because it added like a new spot i love the locations is like probably my favorite part of quests is seeing new places and then obviously the things to do in those new places are also important but i just like places and them looking cool yeah i mean new locations are always exciting because you know there's so much that they could put in there yeah like Whenever whenever they make one of the black voids on the map a thing, I'm always super excited, you know? I don't know what my favorite quest would be. I put Song of the Elves. Probably, no, probably like Dragon Slayer 2. That's also a I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um. Yeah, probably Dragon Slayer 2. Sins of the Father, actually. No, that's my favorite. That one's also I really good. enjoyed Sins of the Father. I did that one blind. Uh, I like Dragon I Slayer 2 it's... a lot. Because I feel like Dragon Slayer 2 simultaneously takes itself very seriously. And like not quite as seriously as something like Song of the Elves or Sins of the Father does. Mm-hmm. That's fair. You know they changed the uh, the story a bit in 
uh, Dragon Slayer 2. Like, since pretty its recently. initial launch? Yeah, pretty recently. Wow. What did they do? Bob no longer uh, is killed due to you jumping out of the way. He jumps in front of you now. Weird chant? Yeah. So, they they changed that. <laughs> and it doesn't make an, a ton of sense, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Yep. That feels like some more fucking chosen one bullshit. I don't know how I feel about that. Jumping out of the way and getting Bob killed very much retained the you're just like a nuisance. You're just a guy. <laughs> yeah, you're just... And you yeah. fuck up sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I mean, realistically, you didn't fuck up, right? You wanted to live, and Bob just happened to be there. El Bozo. I thought it was fine. I don't know. That seems like a weird change. Yeah, I don't know. Um... So, when playing quests, how do you generally interact with them? Uh, I do them. And <laughs> they want to know if you spend more time on, like, the main path, or if you do, like, the optional elements, or if you just kind of space bar through is the last option. Um, I, I spend time on the main quest, uh, and I and I do explore some of the side stuff, too. Um and I'll, after the quest, go back and explore any of the new areas. Like, when Sins of the Father came out, and I uh, found the area where they have, like, the blood belts. And I was like, holy shit, guys. Guys, cannibal blood belts. going to be cracked. Yeah, cannibal that multi shit, That blood shit belts. changed the game for blood belts. They went from, like, oh a pretty alright task to just a, a crazy good task. Yeah, it's a cannibal task that has superiors. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's cracked. Uh, when comparing old school exclusive quests, those released after 2013, to the legacy quests, those from 2007 and earlier, what do you find more enjoyable? The exclusive quests, by far, dude. Yeah, oh my god. They're so much better. I'm, I'm glad the old quests are still in the game. Some of them have a unique charm to them that I wouldn't want to lose. But on large, the like gameplay elements of the old quests are, are just not, not quite as fun. Mm-hmm. And as we said, the dialogue in the new requests is, you know, often yeah, a lot I, better. I'm, I can't remember the name of the quest, but there's a quest where, like, your character, like, emotes with, like, asterisks throughout the whole oh, thing. Oh, fucking, it's that's real... uh, Rat Catchers. Yeah, it's so cringe. Oh my god, Rat Catchers can actually go burn. It's so bad. Yeah, rat Catchers has pretty terrible writing. Uh, and all of the actual interactive parts of the quests are boring as well. Bad quest. Yeah. But, you know, Recipe for Disaster is pretty fire. Um, I really love the... I think it's... Re- yeah, it's Recipe for Disaster. When you're making the uh, the cake for the Lumbridge Guide and you have to take the fucking quizzes about, like, the NPCs and they, like, pop out of the eggs or whatever. I love that. Oh, hey. There's another tree event. Let's I'm go! Participate. Um, for each of the following elements, what would you say they are done better in old school exclusive quests or legacy quests? And they want to know for stories, characters, dialogue, location, combat, puzzles, or rewards. I think for the most part, it's better in old school. However, I will say the puzzles, you know, they're about the same across the board. Um, they definitely were more puzzle focused in older quests. Um... So I actually I think Legacy gets that, and I think Legacy also gets rewards better, because they're more willing to give you just a cannon for a low level shit quest. <laughs> like the the rewards are insane for old quests. Like new quests are like okay here's a thing, but we had to like really nerf it because it, you know we don't want anything better than the the stuff that came out in two thousand five. Like you, we're never gonna get uh like. We got uh, Below Ice Mountain, uh, the, the the area there, uh, Camdozel or whatever. Yeah, Camdozel. Yeah, Camdozel. It got nerfed to the ground because it was, you know, a bit oh, no. better in free-to-play. Oh no, prayer XP in free-to-play. So I think the puzzles and the rewards are probably better in old quests, but like everything else, like the, the actual like quest is by far better in old school. Uh, when it comes to adding new quests, how appealing would you find the following? Quests that continue existing storylines, quests that start new storylines, and standing alone quests. Um, I mean, I think most people prefer, like, storylines, like, you know, 
quests that like aren't standalone. Yeah, I like I it. Don't know if I it's like just... it when quests have storylines a lot. Yeah. I I you know, when they release Desert Treasure 2, it's like, "Oh boy, continuations of things." I I'm always excited to see what storyline they're going to continue next. I think there's a question about this too. Um mm-hmm. they're like, "Oh, should we focus on, you know, finishing a storyline or should we continue jumping around?" I love the way they, yeah. they jump around and just like yeah do random stuff. i'm always excited like to see anything's what happens getting next. too much yeah it feels like you know nothing's getting too much attention except for the desert the desert's getting a lot of attention right now but i think i think desert Treasure, yeah. desert Treasure 2 while starting in the desert and like the the vault thing is in the desert a lot of it occurs outside of the desert as far as my understanding yeah. goes so because desert treasure one was that way so yeah i mean it's not a desert quest line you know that's yeah. a different quest so um when it comes yeah when it comes to new quests how appealing would you find the additional quests in each of the following tiers novice uh intermediate experienced master grandmaster uh it's more appealing as you get closer to grandmaster for me yeah i still want lower level quests in the game it's always fun and obviously if you want to start a new storyline you know you probably want to add some 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 baby boy quests but yeah, I'm going to say intermediate is somewhat unappealing. Or not intermediate. Novice is somewhat unappealing just because, like, usually they're it's not like terribly uh, interesting quests. Getting Ahead, you know? I think, was the one that's south of the Farming Guild. That was, like, kind of a nothing quest. It had the bear in it, I guess, the headless bear. But oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that quest. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, the, the headless bear. And then also, yeah, it's like, cool. Also, the other new Zaya quest where you had to, like, run around to all the different temples that one was also kind of boring because that one's just uh, like lore even... set up nothing actually happens in that quest i don't even know what quest you're talking it was the, about it was the most recent honest. one uh where you had to go to all the temples and like collect the things oh oh the... what did you call it i didn't give it a name i i don't know what it's called oh okay it's um the... garden of death the garden of death yeah I was going to say Death something. I'm like, no, that's not right. Thinking of Death Plateau. Uh, yeah, Garden of Death. That quest sucked. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I hated the it. The puzzles were like, all right, but nothing happened. That was the problem. It was just all lore set up. And it's yeah. like, whatever, man. That should have just been part of another quest. Yeah. It should have been part of another quest, and it should have been like one or two sections, not like six. Or it should have, or like, there could have been six sections, but like something else happens in between every section at that point you're getting it to be like a master or a grandmaster quest because it's so fucking long and you're probably adding all kinds of weird shit so i don't know it was just so boring like i i was interested for the first like one and a half and then it was just the same thing yeah. over and over and i was like fuck i hate this this sucks yeah it was, i was doing it blind too it was too long and I, like i said i think if they had made it so there was like something else that happened in between each section of puzzle if you had to like go fight a guy or go do a different thing or or something just something other than that puzzle repeatedly like six times in a row it probably would have been fine but yeah so i put right in the middle intermediate you know i could you know sure give us a quest of that tier i don't think we've seen really quests of that tier in a while um let let me look at what the ratings of these quests were I was getting, oh, yeah. can I was I, getting ahead. Can we filter by getting ahead was intermediate. Um, okay. And then Garden of it, Death. Getting ahead was okay. Yeah, it was fine. Garden of Death was intermediate. I feel like that should be novice. That that was a nothing quest. Oh, there's an, a, there's an the official eye. difficulty page. Oh, it yeah, doesn't Temple like... of the Eye was uh, intermediate. I guess. I wish to, I wish I could sort by release date on these pages. I know. I might add that, all the current ones were intermediate. That's about it though. We haven't had like a real quest in oh, this. Below tier, Ice though. Mountain was novice. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be nice if we had some more quests in that tier. Um experienced and master I put as somewhat appealing, you know. I'd be fine with those, but but yeah, the quests everyone really wants is the grandmasters. Those those are the juicy ones. Well, hang on a second. 
Beneath Curse Sands and uh, Sins of the Father are both master quests. True. Master quests ain't nothing but, to sneeze at. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But, like, the Grandmaster ones are, like, you know, they tend to be very long, and they have a lot of content to them. I guess. I mean, currently um, the only Grandmaster quests are Dragon Slayer 2, Monkey Madness 2, and Song of the Elves. So. Yeah. And I is Desert Treasure 2 give me Grandmaster? I imagine it would uh, be. I think so. It probably shows it on the actual... It doesn't show it on the... Uh, the list, but if I check it in game, does it? The wiki lists as, as Grandmaster. Yeah, Desert Treasure Two is Grandmaster. Yeah, it's not yeah. shown on the page so. on the page that has all Grandmaster quests. I'll probably update that right now. Um, yeah. So they they also want to know how interested would you uh, be in seeing us at a new tier quest above Grandmaster in the future? The problem with that is we don't have enough Grandmaster quests to like yeah. warrant another tier above it. You know, like I, I am interested in that. I would like to see what you could do with that. But Grandmaster quests um, are already like crazy in and of themselves. And I feel like if yeah. we start adding whatever the fuck you'd call a tier above Grandmaster. Yeah, I don't even know what you'd call it. Whatever that becomes. I feel like at that point, those are going to be really fucking hard quests. <laughs> like you need to add actual insane difficulty because if the if the desert treasure 2 bosses are of any substance at all desert treasure 2 will be the hardest quest in the game probably um it really just comes down to how difficult the quest versions of the bosses are you know how much they're nerfed Mm -hmm. yeah um how many new quests would you like to see per year I think I said like four. I put eight. I think we need a lot more quests. I, I think yeah. we should have like a team dedicated to adding quests. I think I said and like I'm four fine because that's assuming that they're all like experienced through Grandmaster tier. <laughs> mm, yeah, no, I'm fine with like. You but know, yeah, if we had if we had some novice and five, intermediate ones sprinkled in, yeah, I'd expect something more in the realm of eight. Yeah. I think they could do it too, with how big the old school team is. Like, I feel like we could pump out some some quests. They don't all have to be crazy, you know. They can be. I'm some... hoping uh, if slash when sailing gets released, um, that adds a lot of space for new quests. Oh yeah, for sure it will. Um, how interested would we be in seeing new quests in the following storylines? Desert, which is the Beneath Crystals and Ithlaren's little helper. I want to see so far. Gnome so. slash monkey. Monkey Madness 2 is like done. What else would we add there? Um, is there, Isn't there a bit of a cliffhanger? Like, Gluff, di- Gluff dies, but like, I, I feel like there was some string that was like left open to interpretation. It's been a while. Um, I guess theoretically, you know, the people that were like aligned, the, the gnomes that were aligned with Gluff and all like the other people that were aligned with Gluff could yeah. like theoretically start like their own thing and we'd have to go deal Maybe. with that. I'd be fine with this quest line being done though, I think. Yeah, same. Um, I feel like that would probably become like a part of another quest, like the Gluff's old allies start fucking around and like in, a, in another part of a quest they're a nuisance but it's a completely separate yeah. quest line they just happen to be there kind of thing because that happens a lot too a lot of the quest lines are like intertwined with each other which is always kind of cool dragonkin i think this one's also done is there a cliffhanger at the end of the dragonkin quest line um not really i don't think um but the dragonkin i, I think it's less of that quest line being done and more of exploring the lore of like the old dragonkin yeah theoretically I mean, there's I some stuff Zorgoth, to do there, but... the the weird dragon dude is still alive um i don't know if we kill him i don't think we do so sure i mean i don't know i'm going to put somewhat uninterested still for that just cuz i i I feel like Dragon Slayer is in a good place for now. Um, Great Krend. 
Uh, I want to know who the fuck Zarek is. Yeah, I want to know who Zarek is, and I want to see Varlamore. Get it done, yeah, Jagex. Give me Varlamore. Yeah, also, like, there's... It's a whole new continent, basically, we can explore. Also, I want to know more about the, uh, the blue people. The blue people? The, the guys under Mount Karum. The fucking three huge guys. Mm. We know a little bit about yeah, them, yeah, but, yeah. like, what... Who are they? Why do they exist? We know that they're, like, into balance or whatever. Like, why? Are yeah, they gods? They're, they're some kind of demigod, yeah. clearly? Like, what's going on? I'd yeah. love to hear more about that. I'd love to investigate them. And also, yeah, like, the, the Arceus people in general. Mm-hmm. We know a little there, bit about like them. There's, like, books. Yeah, there's books you can read that, like, explain that a bit. I've read some like of them. Like, how they came to be, but... Like, but... I'd, I'd love to see more about that. I think that that lore is interesting. Like, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff to explore on Zaya. That would, I'd love to see more. Yeah. Um, and, like, Din. I want to know more about Din. Yeah. I, I feel like they kind of forgot about all that. <laughs> um, the Myrik quest line, Sins of the Father and in aid of them. I'd love to see the Grandmaster quest that comes after Sins yeah. of the Father. Yep. Because I, I want to that's kill the end of that. Big Daddy Vampire. Yep. yep. That's, Finish that quest line. Give me another upgrade to the fucking uh, staff that gives it a real special attack. Yeah, the, that'd the be flail. Because nice, the special attack, yeah, the the Ivanis flail has like a special attack, but it just does nothing. Yeah, it like, works specifically all the vampires you fight against for... like vampire juvenites or something, and it, it yeah. suspends them. It's like cool, whatever. Give me a real special attack. I don't care what it does. I just want it to do something. And like maybe its stats can get better. I don't care. Mm-hmm. The pirate quest line, I don't really remember how this ends. It's been a while. I don't think it really does end. I'm... You just, like... You, like, fight the dude on that island, right? Uh, The the big mech guy in, like, the suit. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, barrel chest. Barrel chest, yes. And that's, like, the end of the quest line. Like, I don't know... I, I, I don't know where what what else there is for that quest line. Like, was there a cliffhanger? Hang on a second. Yeah, we can look uh, this up. Yeah, so here's the thing, right? Um, pirate quest line is kind of weird. There's rum deal, right? Where yeah, you you get Captain Braindeath his rum and you get him to fuck off. There's Cabin Fever, where you go to Moss the Harmless, and there's Great Brain mm-hmm. Robbery, where, you know, you kill, uh, what's his nut? Uh, Barrel, Barrel chest. chest. None of these quests are really connected at all. Yeah. I mean, they're connected in that like, you have to do one to be able to get to the other physically, but that's it. Um. So, like, I, this is some more possible sailing quests i guess yeah i think that'd be a neat way to like continue sailing i'm gonna put kind of a it's like, neither interest nor uninterested yeah it's kind it. of it's kind of a spot where they could expand but there's no like particular quest line you're continuing you're just kind of adding more stuff yeah uh the temple knight sea slug thing though is definitely yes. on a cliffhanger i want to i want to see the the, Ain't the nothing's happened this. there since like 2006. Yeah, like we've just kind of left everyone to like sit there with like these parasites on this dock, and like Witch Haven is all like mind controlled, and there's the the thing under the the lighthouse, and it's like I want to know what's going on. Yeah. I definitely like to see. I don't know how it goes in RS3, but I know that this quest line is like largely done in RS3. So I'd love to see yeah. their version of this in old school. Because that's one thing I really like. I love that. I think this is also a question on the survey. I love that our the OSRS quest series are sometimes the same, but often like similar ish, but different. They diverge. Yeah. yeah. I really like that. Yeah, because, like, I know with, like, Song of the Elves, like, the, the factions are different. Yeah. 
Because in, uh, in, uh, in RS3, it's called Plague's End. I know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Camelot quests? I don't care about the Camelot quests. Yeah, this is... Does anyone care about these quests? <sighs> Camelot was just... It was British people being British and shoehorning the Camelot shit into the game. Fucking whatever. Yeah. Man. Yeah, just... It's King's done. Ransom was actually kind more... of a fun quest. I mean, I'm not saying, like, I dislike the quest, but, like... Yeah, I don't think anyone really cares. Don't... Yeah. Like, I I didn't feel motivated to, like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens with, with King Arthur next. If you were excited know. to see what happens with King Arthur uh, next, I'm not sorry. I don't care. <laughs> um, The Dorgishan quest, though, I am very yes. interested in. This is another spot Cause... where I'd love to see the way that they diverge, because I actually I went and read how this goes in RS3 um, because uh, Malachi was talking about like the quest reward you get from the, the last one in this quest series, uh, which I think I talked about on the podcast briefly, um, but I'd be very interested to see where they take the direction of this one. And I well, hope... Where does it go in RS3? Uh, do you like you know, you you figure out what happened to 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 put it simply, you figure out what happened to Zanuck. Zanuck's like uh, a a Bandosian war general or some shit. I don't really remember. And then at the end, you have to make a decision to either kill her or s- spare her or something. And oh, interesting. You get a different version of the item depending on whether you killed her or spared her. If you killed her, it's like a bloodied version, and if you spared her, it's like a uh, an honorable version, I think is what it's called. Huh. Neat. I'm still interested in, yeah, in I'd love to see seeing how this goes. Quest. Yeah. Goblin's cool. Please make the city better, though. Yeah, I'd love to see a Dorgish Khan refresh. Yeah. Uh, Fairy Tale Part 3, please. I need this yes. in my life. I don't care what um, happens anymore. Just add it to the game. <laughs> Yeah, please, for the love of God. Um, I I just want a, a conclusion to this, and I I don't really care too much about the rewards. I just want the story to end. If we get the uh, the prayer alignments, it'd be cool if there's like a fairy prayer alignment. That feels odd, though, because like, I don't know... The fairies aren't like a religious thing. You don't pray to the fairies. Do they have a god? You can pray to the moon. I guess. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Don't I've know. always, I've always felt there's there was like a connection there because they're like, they're the moon, <laughs> and there's like all the cosmic entity bullshit that's like related to being able to use fairy rings, and there's all this, this weird like ethereal shit. So maybe not prayer book, but some kind of like magical power, you know? Maybe not a spell book. Def- I don't think it's a spell book, but there's something going on there, you know. Some kind of room for expansion. But yeah, Fairy Tale Part 3. Do it. Yes, please. Uh, Fremenic? I think Fremenic feels mostly done now, right? Um. With Fremenic Exiles? I mean, I think there's always room for expansion there. But. Yeah. It, it's pretty well concluded right now. I don't think it's particularly pertinent that they make more of that. You could probably do more stuff with like the Moon Clan. Moon Clan and the uh, yeah. Fremnix. Yeah, we could probably get more with that and I don't know, maybe there's a way you can become the chief of the Fremnix or something. That might be cool. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. It is the uh, the Moon Clan stuff. Is that part of the Fremenic quest line, or yeah. is that part of Lunar a Diplomacy? Is considered line? part of the uh, Fremenic quest line. Okay. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing some stuff there. Um, the Dwarf quest line. Technically, uh, a here, but I don't know how much I care about this quest line. To be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna put it kind of in the middle. Um, I also don't care about how the quests or the troll quests go. Yeah, what do we have? What's you the know? last ship for troll right now? Like, 
How does that making friends with my arm? Oh, where you yeah, that's kind of twice. over. Yeah, I feel like that quest line is also another one where, like, yeah, you could theoretically add more, but like, it's done. It's good. I like it. You're gonna hate my response to this next one. Cold War needs a uh, addition, and Elemental Workshop uh, does too. Elemental Workshop. I don't give me care Elemental about Workshop it. three. It's... Do it, cowards. I don't care. Cold War does need something else though. Elemental Workshop. No. Nah. Give me more Elemental Workshop. They have modern game the... design tricks now. They could make it interesting and fun. They could. I think they could make something but, really cool if they put yeah. their minds to it. Yeah, maybe. But uh, Masharat, the last one. I really want to see where this goes. Dude, I'm going to be honest. I don't really care about the Masharat. Yeah. Really? I, it's kind of cool, I guess. But every time I've interacted with them in old school, I'm like, cool, whatever. I don't know. I've, I've never had the same hype about these guys as everybody else. I, I don't know. I think that's really cool. Um, I really enjoyed Secrets of the North, and I'm interested to see what goes on with the with the Skelly Bros. I, I like their new designs, too. Yeah, I think they look cool. I don't know. Secrets of the North was not very exciting to me. I'm going to be honest. Maybe really? it was just the mindset I was in when I did that quest, but I was not super enthralled by that quest. I thought it was it was it was cool. Don't get me wrong, but like, I don't know. It didn't really get me. I was maybe I was just hoping for more, but. It didn't excite me very much. Muspa was the coolest part. I like that boss fight. Um, Honestly, the most interesting part is that the guy with the fucking bow sword showed up. That's all I yes. care about. The actual Skelly Bros. I don't know. Fuck those guys. So I, I kind of liked working with Kazard. That was kind of funny. Yeah. I like how he just hated us throughout the entire quest. I also kind of didn't like that at the same time, though. It's like, cool, whatever, you hate me. I, I don't give a shit. I don't know. It wasn't... Yeah. I wasn't super excited about it. I'm hoping Desert Treasure 2 is more interesting to me. Um, and I'm kind of worried that Desert Treasure 2 is going to be kind of the same, where I'm like, wow, these four bosses are really cool. But the rest of the quest just isn't super exciting to me. I don't know. I thought the quest was fun. I enjoyed it. I just really liked um, Muspa. I thought it was a cool boss. Yeah, must was a good boss. I also liked that they expanded Trollweiss a little bit. That, that ties more into my locations thing. I like going to new places and refreshing mm -hmm. old places. When it comes to new quests, what would you like to see more or less of the following elements when compared to existing quests? In-depth characters, deep and immersive plots, dark and serious tones, fun and quirky tones, interesting puzzles... Challenging combats, exciting new rewards, new areas to explore, the chance to revisit existing areas. I like characters with depth. I don't like characters that are just like one tone the whole time. You know? Like, Xanic like... is a really interesting character because there's a lot going on to her. I like characters with depth, but I feel like if we get too depth, we start taking ourselves too seriously. And we lose yeah. what makes RuneScape quests RuneScape quests a little bit. Um, like Song of the Elves kind of has this problem. They kind of try to have this side plot with you and Elena, and it just never really goes anywhere. And I feel like what do you mean? Like they, you always talk to Elena. Like you can talk to Elena in like half the parts, and like there's different dialogue options. I, I don't know. It's just I don't think I ever really talked to her during the quest. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, it it felt like kind of an unnecessary part of the quest. I, I don't know. Um, that felt like character depth, just because, as opposed to character depth that is actually important to the quest, kind of thing. You know. Mm hmm. Um. So character depth, I I, I think is important, but it needs to be relevant to what is happening as well. It can't just be character depth because we like having de in-depth characters. Like, cool, but I need a reason to care. I'm not just going to care about Elena someone just because. She has the weird elf models. Yeah, she looks weird. <laughs> the elf, A lot of the elf models look fine. Elena looks weird because 
she should just look like a normal fucking person, but she doesn't. Yeah. And like I've said, I think, I think I've said this before, that, that one fine. chick in Beneath Curse Sands, the, the main chick, whatever her oh, name is, yeah. she has the same I fucking problem. Um, yeah, what the fuck was her name? Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, give me her name. I think it starts with an it's M. Mesa. Yeah. M A I S A. She looks weird. Like she doesn't look she... bad. She looks fine, but she looks weird. Like there's a part of the She's quest a, a little over detailed. Yeah. There's there's a lot of the parts. There's there's a part of the quest where you have to talk to the. Uh, the herbalist in um, whatever city that is. Uh, is it Narda? I think it's Narda. Yeah, it's Narda. Narda, yeah. And the quest dialogue changes from talking to uh, Misa to talking to, uh, I think the herbalist's name is Zahur. Uh, I don't know how the fuck it's pronounced. Yeah. But it, it switches between them. And it's just a night and day difference when it switches between their chat heads. And it's really jarring. Yeah. I mean, she has like kind of the old style she's too smooth it's just it's just a little yeah that's fair i did really like the champion of scarabus she's less detailed than like the yeah the rs or not the rs the the elves yeah which i I think is good i think it's probably better than the elves but it still feels a little weird yeah um i really liked the champion of scarabus's uh head the like how he's got like the scarabus head going on and all the uh mm-hmm. um the lesser deities uh yeah the i'm sad icons they of disappear Tumekin. yeah i wish they yeah, stayed there I'm s- in the, in the yeah. tomb. they look cool i really like their designs and then there's like uh what's her face appearing at the end of uh doing yeah, your first um, TOA. a masket a mask it, yeah, and then she just isn't there anymore. Her character like, model is also pretty sick. Yeah. I feel like uh, specifically um, Mysa, or however you say that, is is the one I have problems with. Yeah. Everybody else looked mostly fine, though. Yeah. I I can agree with that. Um, Why are we talking about this? <laughs> Uh, we're talking about uh, in-depth characters, and then we right. started talking about Elena, and then right, 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 right. yeah, yeah. Uh, depth ca- characters with depth is good. It just needs to be relevant to the story. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't just have characters spewing their depth just because. Yeah, I don't want to hear a character's backstory unless it like matters to the quest, and like there's a reason for my character to know it. You know? Yeah. Um, like if I have an option to ask an npc about it but it's not mandatory for the quest sure but i don't like that i'm gonna be honest because i always want to hit every dialogue option and read them and if there's irrelevant information i'm just reading things that don't matter at all fair understandable um that's kind of a me problem though i guess yeah related to in-depth characters is deep and immersive plots um, I think we get enough of that. I don't think we need to adjust how much yeah. deep plots we have. I I would like to see some plots that are, you know, deep and I'd like to see some plots that are kind of more shallow. Yeah. Um I those questions yeah, you get burnt out if all your quests are super serious. Yeah, and... those questions I I worried about my answer to just because I feel like part of I RuneScape's identity is that it doesn't take itself too seriously. So if we start getting uh, just the phrasing of deep and immersive quests, it feels like it's taking itself very seriously, you know. And I, yeah, exactly. I don't want to. I don't want us to get too serious about it. We can have our, uh, our grandmaster because even like I, I was about to say, we can have yeah, our speak- grandmaster quests that take things very seriously. But I feel like Dra- Dragon Slayer Two, like I said earlier, it doesn't take itself like too seriously, if I remember la- right. I feel like it did. It's you know, I don't. The world's been gonna end. We have to stop the dragonkin. They're gonna kill everyone, kind of thing. I don't know why, but Dragon Slayer Two always felt very RuneScape to me. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, it feels RuneScape, but like RuneScape can be serious I guess, at times. I don't know. Maybe I'm just skitzing it. Um, but 
uh, speaking of overly serious, dark and serious tones. Sometimes. Uh, I'm okay with it like Yeah, I'm going to put sometimes for that and also fun and quirky tones. Like, I want a mix. I don't want... Yeah, I don't want us to go either All one or the other. Yeah. I I feel like in the past, they've been pretty good about having comedic relief in suitable areas. Just like some characters saying, you know, a quip. You know, usually RuneScape related, making some joke about like some thing that happens. Um, I yeah. can't think. And of this is a bad question house, but... because for all the rest of the answers, I'm putting I'd like to see more because it's would you like to see good puzzles, good combat, good rewards, new areas, and old areas? Yeah, I want to see all those. Yeah, like, I... you're not getting any information by asking this question. Yeah, I would like to see all of those, and I'd like to see all of those frequently. Yeah. I don't want quests that are uninteresting. Thank you, Jagex, for asking this question. Yeah. It's like, yes, I would like good rewards. I would like to go places. And I would like to engage with the game, a.k.a. puzzles and combat. Because mm-hmm. those are the most yeah. engaging part of quests. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to continuing storylines that have already been continued in RuneScape, how interested would you be in the following? Quests that tell the same stories as the RuneScape of Quill villains? I am extremely uninterested in that. Nope. I do not care what RS3 did. We are a different game. I I know we're related. There are, you know, there are brother, but we don't have to follow down their the same footsteps, you know. It if the the storyline makes sense to keep going that way, sure. But if there's interesting other ways to go, go that way. Uh, quests that share overarching themes with the RuneScape equivalents, but with various elements unique to old school. Ding ding ding. Uh, sure. Uh, but I'm gonna say uh, I'm more slightly more interested, not extremely interested, just somewhat interested in quests that go a different way. You know, because the way RS3 goes, we enter the fifth age and you become the chosen one. I don't want that cringe. for old school. It's cringe. When it comes to existing storylines, which strategy would you prefer? Note that regardless of the strategy, the overall number of quests released per year would be the same. Focusing on each storyline one at a time and only moving on to the next one? No. I want focusing on multiple storylines. Yeah, give, I talked give, about this earlier. Yeah, let, let jump around a bit, you know. Don't let one storyline get stale. Um, thinking about the future of old school narrative, how much do you agree or disagree with the following statements? The backstory of the world should be mysterious and open to interpretation. The gods return to the world and you should be able to interact with them. Cringe. The storyline should have conclusions rather than continuing in perpetuity. A player should a player character should be an ordinary individual rather than being a chosen one with unique abilities. Based. And individual storylines should remain separate rather than crossing over each other. Cringe. Okay. Let's take this one by one. The backstory of the world should be mysterious and open interpretation. I'm gonna disagree. I feel like we have a good way to explain it, and that's the gods, you know? Yeah, but what like, do we know about not... the gods? Yeah, nothing right now. So but I, I, think we could I kind of like that, personally. That's I like fair. the gods being mysterious and gone. Like, I'd be okay. fine with learning about their history, but that also leads yeah. into the question of, you know, should they return to the world? Absolutely fucking not. Yeah, the gods should return to the world? No, never. Absolutely I don't think not. we should be interacting with Guthix or with uh, Zamorak or or any of these gods. Maybe they, they could be elements of the quest, but I do not want to be killing Zamorak as a fucking repeatable boss like RS3 has now. Yeah, that shit's wild. Like, I understand that's the way RS3 has gone, but... Yeah, that, I don't want the gods to ever fantasy. come back. I I like the fantasy that we're in where the gods existed and then they stopped existing and we exist in a post-god world. Well, the gods still exist. They just... Well, they exist, right, sabbatical. but they're gone. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not really around. And they're... Um, and if, if the backstory of OSRS remains the same as RS3, they were told to leave. They were forcibly removed, and they are not supposed to come back. So, Storyline should have clear conclusions rather than continuing in perpetuity. I'd say neither disagree or agree. Yeah. If 
if it makes sense, you could theoretically continue them for a really long time. Yeah. But, but if they can know, come to a conclusion, sure. And it's satisfying and makes sense, yeah, end it. Player should be an ordinary individual rather than being a chosen one. Fucking 100% agree. Oh my god, please don't make I'm me the chosen so one. I'm so sick of just every goddamn MMO being the chosen one shit. Every single guy. MMO. Always. Let me be a dude. Yeah. But I just want to fish my fish and chop my trees. I don't I don't have to I don't have to also be like a descendant of Guthics or something, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Um individual sh- storylines should remain separate rather than crossing over each other. I'm going to disagree. Yeah, that, that's a Somewhat slightly disagree. disagree from me. Um Yeah. I, I like it when they cross over, but just don't go crazy with it, you know? Yeah, not every quest needs to be, like, intermingled into every aspect of the game. But, like, you know, I'd be fine with some quests, you know, crossing over. Like the Majora and the Desert quests, you know, I'd be fine with that. But, yeah, like, like it makes Cold sense. War, that should that should be separate. I don't want, yeah, Cold, I don't want that to interact. Cold War, like, kind of theoretically could maybe interact with the troll quest line. If we, like, had some interaction with Weiss going on or something. Uh, okay. I could see like, it. Like, it, it just needs to make any amount of sense, right? I'm fine with them interacting as long as it makes sense. And, like, theoretically, yeah, I, 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 it, I, I, could, it could interact with other storylines. Because, like, the whole penguin thing is like, oh, you know, they want to fucking invade the world. Sure, so maybe it ends up being something like Monkey Madness 2 or uh, Dragon Slayer 2, where you have to interact with other people because you're like, oh shit, guys, the penguins are going to kill us all. <laughs> you know? Yeah, okay. But it needs to make sense, so it's kind of like a slight disagree. They can cross mm-hmm. over, but just make it work. Yeah. Um, and that's the the end of the survey. Wow. There's no more. We're done. Um. Yeah, honestly, my strongest opinions were the Chosen One thing and the God's Return yeah. to the World thing. Yeah, don't, I don't do either of those shit. ones. Get them out of here. I, I like old school when it's medieval fantasy, you know? Yeah. I I, I enjoy some of the high fantasy stuff. I like the, the elf quest line. Yeah. Um. But you know, I want more of the we're in a dungeon killing fucking skeletons. I like that shit. Yeah, I don't I don't mind here and there interacting with, you know, fragments of the gods or perhaps the gods themselves, but at a distance. You know, like uh you know, you interact with Saren and you kinda learn about how Saren was just like you learn about the backstory of Saren, but she's gone, you know, and you interact with a, yeah. a remnant of her. I, I like that. I'm okay with that. As long as she doesn't just, like, return, and she's just, like, chilling now. Yo, what up? I'm Saren. You can come hang out and kill me as a repeatable boss. <laughs> like, no. Please, no. Yeah, I like learning about what the gods did while they were here, and the impact that they've had, and how they did that. But they mm. shouldn't come back. Yeah. Uh... I think that's everything that we have to talk about this week. Yeah. Unless you have anything. I mean, unless you mind, really but... wanted to talk about mage strength. No. We were originally going to talk about, like, the... They, like, talked about nerfing the occult in the Desert Treasure 2 reward pull blog. I think that's, like, something they should probably do, but I don't think we can really... That's not something for our show to really talk about, at least right now. Yeah. Maybe if they um, talk about it again in more depth, we'll talk about it. But it was just kind of like an offhanded mention. So that I, I didn't yeah. even notice it. You told me that it existed. And I was like, huh? Yeah, they, they mentioned it. And I was like, yep, yeah, they should do that. Um, I have some spicy ideas for that. But may, maybe another episode we can talk about that. But uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, make sure you follow, like, and subscribe wherever you're you're listening to it. Uh, recommend us to your friends. Uh if you want to support the podcast, you can do so via Patreon, uh, where I will actually now, on time, release episodes early and uncensored, if I ever censor them, which I don't. 
Uh, and without ads, without ads, yeah, that's, there, that's there what there are no that no ads. Yep. Uh, we'll also uh, shout out your name uh, during the episode. Uh, if you want to f- watch the video versions, we're catching up on that now. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel uh, at Guthics Rest Pod. Uh, you can also follow us on, on Twitter. I think on Guthix YouTube Rest it's just at Guthics Rest. Oh, is it? Okay. I think I claimed that. Yeah, it's just at Guthics Rest. I need to like have a checklist of things to run down yeah, so should. I don't. I thought you already had like up, a real but... list. Nope. You gotta, you gotta get just... this shit under control, man. Come on. <laughs> I just ran it off the dome. Um, follow us on Twitter at Gethics Rest Pod. Uh, you can also follow our personal Twitters that we rarely use, and join the Discord where we've actually had some conversations going on in there, and people have been uh chatting a bit. Uh, we're I think up to like twenty members in there now, which is cool. Uh, nope, wow. sixteen. I lied. Uh, you could be the twentieth member if you join now. Wow. Uh, cool Discord. Uh, you can listen to the live recordings when we do those. And uh, I think that's everything. Did I forget anything? I don't know. They're all in the description. You'll find it. If you're looking for us in a place, I'm sure you can figure it out. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.